Hey guys, I want to show you something out of Psalm 119 today. And it's uh, in, in chapter 119, and it is in verse 42. And he says, So I will have an answer for him who reproaches me, for I trust in your word. Wow. Now, Psalm 119 is a alphabetized according to the Hebrew alphabet. Aleph, Beth, Gimel, it goes on all the way through the alphabet. And it has these really tasty meditations and awesome prayers relating to God's word. And this is the chapter that says the entrance of his word gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. This is the chapter famously that says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. And it's brilliant. This is one of the, this is the biggest chapter in the Bible. It's about right mid, right in the center of my, my Bible. And there's a lot of meat on the bone here. This is helpful. And he says, you know, I'm going to have answers for him who reproaches me. That would be, one, one would be, I come, comes to mind is what it says in Revelation 12, that the accuser of the brethren that accuses us before God day and night. I've read Job and reread Job, and he got pummeled by the lies of the devil, but, and, and, and he did not, Job didn't have the advantage like we do of the accumulation and the development of the scriptures like we do. And yet, by the grace of God, Job endured. And uh, Job is, is, is awesome for that. He's a great example of somebody who's been through stuff and he came through to the other side and God restored him. And he said, no purpose of yours can be thwarted. So I, I don't know what you women or men or kids or new Christians or seasoned, you know, long distance runners are dealing with, but God does. And I'm telling you, his word is to be trusted. And in fact, it says here, so I will have an answer. It says, my, may your loving kindnesses also come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your word. So I will have an answer for him who reproaches me, for I trust in your word. I trust in your word. And do not take the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I wait for your ordinances. Now, this reinforces something we see in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, that Paul the Apostle said to Timothy, who is his real sincere and legitimate son in the faith and was a pastor of a local church in his area. And he reminded Timothy, he said all, in verse 16 of chapter 3, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Wow. Our adequacy, our equipment, our strengthening, our correction, our guidance, our, our value system, our pr parameters and boundaries, the do's and don'ts that are to govern our life, it's all right here. It's all right here. And Paul is saying the Word of God is different from other literature in that it's inspired by God. And yeah, you, people could argue, well, didn't people write it? And then if so... Is, aren't we in danger of the telephone game? You know, the telephone game is where somebody whispers to somebody a, a story and then the next person whispers it to somebody where they can't hear it. And like, like apparently the third person, the story's been changed. Uh, and so there's, you know, critics can argue that this is just written by man and it's just, you know, it's, it, how can it be trusted? Well, here's how I believe, what I believe about this. In, in John chapter 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And words are, the Word of God is extremely important. And God spoke His Word, and that's how things came into existence. So in the beginning, He said, Let there be light, and there was light. When it, at the Genesis account of creation, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We see then that it was from Him speaking the Word, so there's power in that. And, and you know, people, 
uh, intellectuals will will uh, argue about the value of words, and interestingly, they're using words to fight against the power of words. So while doctrine needs to be rightly judged, and we're to, we're to study to show ourselves approved unto God as workmen who need not to be ashamed, handling accurately and rightly dividing the word. The power of words is an emphatic repeat throughout Genesis all the way to Revelation. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. There's power, like if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord. You believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. Romans 10, 9 and 10, you shall be saved. For with the heart man believes and the result is righteousness. Now get this, with the mouth he confesses and the result is salvation. So, I mean, I spoke words to this girl that I was interested in and let her know I was I loved her as a friend, but I was feeling romantic uh, toward her. And I let her know that, and thankfully she responded, and in, in, in our friendship went into, the, into that romance zone from me saying it and her repeating and her sharing her heart, right? And then I asked her to marry me at, at a church parking lot after a Sunday meeting, and, and, and I got down on my knee and I asked her, and she said yes. She was in the car, I was on my knee, um, and it was words. It was an exchange of words. And then I remember at the altar where I made vows to her and she made vows to me. It's sacred, man. And life and death is in the power of the tongue. Uh, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's Whoever said that is, what? You know, words have power. Uh, in World War II, loose lips sink ships in terms of making sure things are, are secure. My dad worked in aerospace and in the defense industry for 42 years, and he had such commitment to his work that to this day, he's long dead. I still don't know what he did through the Cold War and Vietnam and all that. You know, I know some things, but he was so committed to bridling his tongue. And I want to just say this to you. There, there's so much power in words. He says, do not take the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for I wait for your ordinances. He says before that, so I will have an answer for him who reproaches me, for I trust your word. You guys, you can trust the Bible. God has authored it, and because I believe he created the universe, I'm certain and secure and trusting he could preserve the integrity of this book for a few thousand years and bring it to us. And I just want to say, amen.